The Aura 17 is a thicker gaming laptop with an 8-core overclocked i9 CPU and RTX 2080 graphics inside. But high-end specs like this usually equals high levels of heat, so what sort of performance and temperatures are we looking at? In this testing, I'll take a detailed look at thermals and see how much we can improve performance with some simple changes. I've got the highest spec version of the Aura 17, which includes 8 core overclocked i9 9980HK CPU, 200W Nvidia RTX 2080 graphics, and 32GB of memory and dual channel. You can find other configurations and updated prices linked in the description. Air is pulled in from underneath the machine through the mesh area towards the back. It's also pulled in from the vents above the keyboard and through the keyboard. Air is then exhausted out of the back left and right vents and from the vents on the left and right hand sides at the back. Inside we've got 5 heat pipes in total, two of which are shared between the processor and graphics. The CPU and GPU dies are cooled with a vapor chamber which is below the heat pipes, and these go out to the two 12 volt fans that are attached to large heat sinks. As you can probably imagine, these specs need some serious power, and that's why there are two 330W power bricks needed to power it. The Aorus Control Center software allows us to set the CPU between six different power levels. I found that all eight cores were always overclocked to 5 GHz regardless of the power level set. The highest level 5 mode sets 100 watts for PL1. However, we can manually boost this higher too with software like Intel XTU. The GPU can be changed between two levels, however I didn't find this to actually make any practical changes. It would run up to 200 watts in either mode and no overclocking was done, so not sure if that's a bug. The control center software also offers three default fan curves, quiet, normal, and gaming. We also have the option of manually customizing our own fan curve with a fair level of granularity. However, I've just tested with either the default normal mode or with the fans manually set to max speed. You can quickly enable max fan speed by holding the function key and pressing escape, which has the fan icon on it. Thermal testing was completed in an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, so expect different results in different environments. At idle, the temperatures were on the warmer side, but realistically this isn't a problem. The rest of the results are from combined CPU and GPU workloads, and are meant to represent worst case scenarios as I ran them for extended periods of time. The gaming results towards the upper half of the graph were tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results shown on the lower half of the graph are from running the A64 CPU stress test, with only the stress CPU option checked, and the Heaven GPU bench benchmark at max settings at the same time to fully load the system. The CPU was thermal throttling any time it was averaging 95 degrees Celsius, which was happening with most of the stress tests and two of the gaming tests. The GPU was also thermal throttling while gaming with the fan curve set to silent, which is to be expected as a quieter system comes at the trade-off of heat and less performance. I've tested the first stress test with the CPU on the default level 1 setting and GPU on level 0 with the normal fan curve. If we leave the fan curve the same but boost the power limits to maximum, temperatures go up. Makes sense, more power equals more heat. If we then change the fan to max speed, the GPU temperature lowers by 10 degrees. However, the CPU was still thermal throttling. Applying a minus 0.12 volt undervolt to the CPU didn't really affect thermals, and adding a cooling pad only helped a little with the GPU temperature. Again, the CPU was still thermal throttling at 95 degrees in this worst case workload. Setting the fan to max speed with this particular game running was enough to remove the thermal throttle, but this will of course vary by game. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. Regardless of setting level, the GPU clock speed shown by the green bars didn't really change much. Under stress test from the lowest setting to best, it improved by 50 MHz. Though while gaming, it was closer to a 100 MHz improvement. But to be fair, it was only much lower in silent mode as that was thermal throttling on the GPU, and I didn't test silent with the stress tests. The CPU clock speeds were the lowest with level 1 enabled, which is expected as this caps the power limit to 52 watts. However, in the stress test, changing to the highest level 5 didn't change much due to thermal throttling. This is why setting the fan to max speed saw a massive improvement to the CPU clock speed, as it's helping reduce the throttling. 
The CPU Wondervolt helped some more, and then the cooling pad was just icing on the cake and didn't make too much further difference. If you recall, gaming with the silent fan curve was thermal throttling on both the CPU and GPU, so simply going to normal fan improved clock speeds on both. We then see improvements to clock speed as the power limit is raised, which then triggers thermal throttling on the CPU again, which is why max fan speed further boosts performance, with the best result of 4.4GHz being hit with best case settings. It's worth considering that this is over 8 cores, so that's a pretty good result given many 6 core i7 laptops I test struggle to hit their max 4GHz boost speed in these same workloads. These are the average TDP values during these same tests. We can see the CPU power limit change as we increase from level 1 to 5, then further rise as cooling improves to help lower the amount of throttling. The max 200 watts for the 2080 was being reached in all stress test results, however it would seem that this particular game doesn't benefit from more GPU power. Here are the CPU clock speeds while under a CPU only stress test, so the GPU's idle. I've tested all 6 power levels that are controlled through the Aorus Control Center software. Even when I manually boost the power limit above the 100W maximum of level 5 and apply an undervolt, we're maxing out at 4.7GHz. Thermals weren't the limitation. I ran these tests with a fan at the same max speed, so overall they're on the cooler side and not getting too hot. Power limits weren't the showstopper either. By manually boosting the power limit to something high like 200 watts with Intel XTU, it peaked at 135 in this particular workload. The limit was actually current limit throttling, even with the undervolt applied, which I thought was strange behavior given both 330 watt power bricks were connected. Here are some Cinebench results to show how this translates into performance. For reference, a best case 6 core i7 9750H can get around 3000 points or so, which is easily beat even with level 1 on the Aura 17. With the CPU undervolt and power limit increased, the best I could hit was just above 4400, which is quite good when we remember this is a laptop. Just for comparison, here's how the best results compare against some other 8 core machines that I've recently tested, with a good i7 score down the bottom for comparison. It's not quite as good as the larger and thicker machines ahead of it, which I think is expected. I've also tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the game's built-in benchmark tool with different fan modes, and even at max settings with the quiet fan profile, it's scoring excellent results. Despite thermal throttling in quiet mode, as we saw earlier, this mode was still achieving fair power limits and clock speeds, so gaming with low fan noise at the expense of heat and some performance is certainly possible. If you want to see more gaming benchmarks from the Aorus 17, check the card in the top right where I've tested 20 games in total. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle in quiet mode, it's around the typical 30 degrees Celsius I usually see. When gaming with the default fan curve and the CPU and GPU at the default lower options, the keyboard area is still completely cool. If I increase the power limits but leave the fans on the normal profile, it gets perhaps just a tiny bit warmer. With the fans at max speed, it gets quite a bit cooler when playing the same game. Though as you'll hear soon, it's very loud by this point. The results were similar with the CPU and GPU stress tests running. The keyboard and wrist rest area was always cool to the touch. The back is only just a little warm, not even hot, not that you need to touch there anyway. Here's how the fans sound with these different modes in these same tests. At idle, the fans were very quiet, but it was still audible. I only tested gaming with the silent fan curve, and that was just below 45 decibels. With the default normal fan curve in use, the fans were at 52 decibels both in gaming and while under stress test, which is quite average when compared against most other gaming laptops I've tested. With the fans set to maximum speed, it's very loud. You'll definitely want some headphones. Overall, the performance from the Aorus 17 was quite good, however it did run on the hotter side under worst case stress test even with the fans at super loud speeds. A cooling pad and undervolting didn't quite help as much as simply increasing the fan speed of the machine, and given Gigabyte are giving us quite granular control of the fans, it should be possible to find a sweet spot between total system noise levels and performance. Despite the internals getting hot, the exterior remained cool to the touch, so they've done a great job of isolating heat from where you'll rest your hands. Even under worst case load, the RTX 2080 was able to run up to 200 watts, and we've already seen 
seen in the gaming benchmark video, link in the description, it can smash through any game. In the end, I think the performance is about where I expected. It's not quite as good as the thicker options like the MSI GT76 or Alienware 51M, but it's still offering high levels of performance while being perhaps a little more portable than those options, or at least as portable as you can be with two large power bricks. I was a little confused as to why current limit throttling ended up being the limitation preventing speeds above 4.7 GHz in CPU only stress test, but hey, these are still pretty good results so I can't complain too much. Just don't expect to hit 5 GHz in sustained multi-core workloads, even though it's overclocked to that speed on all cores out of the box. It should be possible for less core heavy workloads though. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware, which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. It may be possible to improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste with something else, say liquid metal. However, as this is a borrowed review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise, the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Raising fan speed, using a cooling pad, or undervolting are much easier for most people to do anyway. And as we've seen, these tweaks did help improve performance and temperatures with the Aorus 17. Let me know what you thought about the thermals from the Aorus 17 gaming laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, you'll definitely want to get subscribed for the upcoming full review to see everything this machine has to offer.